Hey people, hope everybody's good. In today's episode, we are looking at the continuation of the van rack out. Um, I'm gonna show you the updates and what I've been doing. Um, I have done a bit of work off camera. Um, here in the UK, um, recently, there's been huge storms, and that has meant that I have seen rain, snow, hail, and then sun, then clouds. I've had about 10 different types of weather situations here in Hebden, so it's made it really difficult to uh, film and to try and concentrate on that. So I did just have to crack on a little bit, um, but I'll show you where I'm up to, I'll show you what's next and what progress we've made, and then we'll crack on from there. <laughs> when I last left you we were getting on with this vertical rack in here so that's all been screwed down and in place and um, pretty happy with that we've added these extra two bits on top here where the uh, table goes this is for my small speed skin and uh, for my small level you could even fit the second level on the top of there and um, which is um, handy so just leaving a little bit of wiggle room for other bits and we're probably gonna level this off there might be another bit that comes out here and um, so this just hasn't got a top on at the moment if you go into the van I've started on some of the horizontal shelving, which you can see. So we've got this nice little shelf here um, that's going to fit bits and bobs on. Haven't worked out what's going to go on it yet, but um, yeah, just got that in. Had a little bit of complications getting around this corner, but wanted to maximise and use all this space. And um, we're going to stick another shelf up here, which is going to be like a second row. So really maximising all of that. Yep, just check in there. The stuff fits in and perfectly. Um, good size for things like your PVAs and your five litre bottles of uh, whatever you've got um, for the day job but probably bit fit some extensions in there and um, or other little bits and bobs but we'll see so that's been that bit and then we're gonna do some racking here as well and then possibly I think what I might do on this bit is just put a big board apply here um, and then we're gonna end up putting maybe some hooks on and then we can hook stuff up too um, so that's that bit and then if we go down here what I've done at the front here as well, just put a nice little neaten this up by putting a trim on so you can't see none of the joinery and then just put a, an aluminium um, L bracket on or like an L strip um, yeah again so that anything that gets hits that just protected and then this bit here um, again for levels this is my larger speed skin here um, and then we've got the larger level and the larger and the straight edge like they pop out the end I couldn't do a lot about that because it hits up against this bit here which you can see but amazingly again more by luck than judgment if this door closes and get it closed with one hand once that is shut they just sit right up against the door so it was almost as if it was meant to be and then just one last little bit in terms of the design then you might notice there's a gap here but that I didn't have the straight edge in there. Put that down. Then I can still reach the hooks. There's little hooks under here, so I can still, if I need to ratchet anything up, I can still grab that in and then tie it down. So just left that gap, but it does mean that I can still get the straight edge down there, but still have access to the little hooks. Can you just see them there? But yeah, that's as far as we've got. So we're going to crack on with that second shelf. We're going to work out what we're going to do on the top of there. We're going to start looking at this X section um, and then we'll go from there. It's probably about as much as I'll get done today. But um, yeah, let's get going. Like, could you keep this as an open space? Would you be able to fit those? Would they yeah, go in the do. size? Yeah, yeah, I could. I could just have them up there. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, how are you doing? 
Do you want to see how we're getting on, Gus? Mm -hmm. Matt, <laughs> Gus called it a big cupboard, and I was like, yeah, basically what it is. Yeah, I know. I thought we could go camping in it, but no such oh. fun. See, look. I know, too many people want to come and chat. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Just a quick word on this pocket hole technique. Um, this is from Toolstation, it's just called a trend pocket hole jig. And um, when I first bought it, it was about 60 quid, I think they're a bit more expensive now. And I did find it hard in my head to justify spending that much money on something that just basically made holes. Um, I have used it a few times, but it's been absolutely worth its weight in gold really for this job. Um, obviously I could go down the route of using angle brackets um, and this route is very labour intensive because I've got to keep drilling all the holes but so far it seems like all these joints are super super strong uh, and obviously the route with the, um, the angle brackets people say they break or they jiggle about I just don't see that happening with this route um, and the other thing is although this was expensive Obviously, apart from having to drill all the holes, I'm not having to buy like hundreds of angle brackets to stick everything together. Um, yeah, so I think, yeah, I would have said this is possibly the route to go down. I'll could get back to you after the van's been used a little bit and, um, and sort of say whether, you know, things are coming loose. But for me, doing this and just making it all nice and tight and secure, especially with butt joints, which aren't the strongest anyway, then yeah, I think this is a better route to go than using angle brackets. So what you spend on this, you, you're saving on angle brackets. And again, it's a good bit of kit. Um, it doesn't look like it's gonna fail anytime soon. So, you know, it's you definitely use it on other jobs. So if you think you're gonna use it again after this, then yeah, maybe it is worth worth the, the money. So just show you what you do. Basically, you just put your bit of wood in there and then it comes with the drill bit and um, that's fits perfectly fits perfectly in the hole you have a little depth um, adjuster there if you want it and then that gives you the pilot so when the screw goes in obviously you know if you're doing furniture then it's got these equidistant and you can move it up and down and um, I'm sure the way I'm using it is probably not the best in terms of strength but I'm not trying to make really fine furniture and um, we're just basically trying to secure down some shelves that are just gonna have a lot of crap on them. People might also say this is overkill. Obviously I've done two on the sides, I do two on either end and two in the middle. But you don't want it sagging, you don't want it moving. Um, you know, if there is gonna be a lot of jolting about in the van and you have got heavy stuff, maybe just jumping up and down on it. Um, you want it to last really, so I think just I could put just one in the middle, but I think just for the sake of one extra screw hole, might as well just put two in the middle and uh, yeah, be a lot more secure. Goes back in there roughly, and then just check for getting a nose on. Plenty of room for the nose. Awesome, so just need to make sure that is straight and then we can drill it in. Right, let's just check that that's level. There you go. Ah, uh, come on. It's much more level. Battery ran out there. We got it in, nice and level. So just got to sort out the nose in. I'm always checking that I haven't cut into the table. Perfect. Now it's time for my favourite toy, the nail gun. What I'm going to do is just stick one nail in there, then I'm going to screw the sides in and then just punch a few more nails in uh, just to make this nice and secure, make no, sure nothing's going to pop off the front. Right, so I've had a bit of lunch and um, had some thinking time. Just got out all the other big stuff that needs to live in the van, or at least have a place in the van. Um, and trying to just basically shuffle it about and see where things can go. So this is what we've come up with. So the idea is to get some shelving that these can 
sort of slide in and out of these stackers here. So we've got the three Bosch boxes by Sotomore, um, very similar to that Sustainer style box that everyone does now. Um, you know, Makita have got their own style and Festool, and got this random one, the Hakoki Nailer. Um, could still do with its own little spot, um, but yeah, definitely I think up to here, um, and then maybe a shelf above it. But yeah, this being racked out, so everything slides in and out. We've also got our buckets, which we need every job. So you've got um, our plastering buckets and uh, the trogs at the bottom. But this really is probably just going to be a couple of eyelets. So I'm going to stick an eyelet here, an eyelet there, bungee, but just strap that in. Got this box with all the hand tools in, like hammers, chisels, um, rasp, um, uh, plasterboard saw, grips, all sorts of things, metal hand tools. So it's kind of heavy, but fits in that space nicely. We've got the uh, the, the 110 volt converter, and then up here on top of this, I'm thinking individual racking for this and this. So these will have their own little spaces there. And I've got this little Stanley toolbox as well. And that could sit up there. And again, it's got its own little space. So that means that's kind of like all coming together quite nicely. And that's most of the big stuff. We've got a few other little bits and bobs. Obviously, shelf up here for um, spares and bits. And then as long as this stacker shelf does not go above there, um, then we can fit a shelf in there as well. And then hopefully that means that more or less everything that is essential is in. But yeah, just as a rough layout, then I think as we move forward, this is this is probably what we're looking at in terms of um, in terms of advancing to the next stage.